met today, Mom. $3,000 in one dollar bills. A fuel race car. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the vlog and thank you for tuning in. Last episode, two days ago, was definitely a headache, stressful day, but the truth is when you're working on cars, we all have this type of days. It's gonna happen, no day is ever perfect. Sometimes when you're having those days, you just need to take a second, take a step back, take a day, and then come back and look at things with a fresh set of eyes. And that's exactly what we did today. We're in a good spot today. Basically, Sandy came in earlier today. He cleaned up a lot of the wiring. He made sure none of it was near the exhaust system. We also cleaned out the oil that was in the exhaust from the scavenge pump malfunction. So got that, all that taken care of. And now the next thing we were wondering about was IATs. What are we gonna do about those intake air temps? When it comes to the C8 Corvette, it's probably newer cars in general. The factory fan without AC charged or turned on doesn't turn on till 205. The factory fan we're using for the heat exchanger is wired to that same 205 setting. So that probably explains a lot why our intake temps are hotter than we have seen them. So we're gonna get the AC charged and we're gonna take an extra step to finally heat wrap the exhaust. It's something I've talked about for a while now, so I'm looking forward to doing it. Everything is V-banded, so it's super easy to take in and out. I think I have some heat wrap around here. I think she'll be pretty happy today. I got a good feeling about this one. And I told you guys I was gonna change those 45s outs to 60 degree fitting, so it should swoop nice under the bumper there. <laughs> Mid. <laughs> It's funny, we were banging our heads against the wall this morning about IAT temps. We totally forgot about the whole AC thing. It's a good place to start. So Sandy bought a Crown Vic. I gave him the old exhaust from the Buick, you know, the one that sticks out under the side skirts. And he's gonna rebuild an automatic transmission and install the exhaust in when he does that too. That'll be fun. Yeah. I bet you're looking forward to that one. No, the transmission <laughs> part's gonna suck. I mentioned Sandy doing the wiring, but I don't think I mentioned that the scavenge pumps failed because a wire melted on the exhaust. Now you know if you didn't know before. I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. You've probably already seen me promote this game and you probably will continue to see me promote the game because it is awesome and they keep adding new things to keep it interesting. It is a turn-based RPG that is free to play on iOS, Android, and PC. When I'm not shredding tires or swapping motors, you'll probably find me playing Rain. The basic concept is you collect a bunch of champions, over 500 to collect, all with different skills and capabilities. Upgrade them and equip them with different artifacts you collect while playing the game. Then take your crew to battle with other online players and challenges. It's honestly super entertaining between getting new champions, finding artifacts, constantly having new challenges or battles to take on. Plus my personal favorite, you can battle with friends or other online players in what they call the PvP arena. I also really like summoning champions through the portal because it's kind of like buying a used engine. You never know what you're gonna get. Raid has 16 different factions. I don't know why I held up 10 fingers, such as orcs, dwarves, undead hordes, and many more. Each faction is made of many unique champions. You guys already know this, but my favorite faction is the Lizardmen because they're so Freaking gangster. Fushan always reminds me of Mimi with those big horns. And lately, I've been picking Drake over Draco more because he's a good luck charm. I also like the orcs because I started with Gallic and he's my A1 since day one. And the really great thing is that there are so many different ways to play. They just released a huge champion update, tweaking and rebalancing over 20 different champions to make PvP arena battles even more competitive. And if that is not enough for you, the Forge just came out. Start crafting top quality artifacts and competing right away. So guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the link in the description below and get 100,000 silver plus your free champion death chanter. All will be waiting for you in your inbox once you hit the link in the description and download your game today. Rewards only available for the next 30 days for new players. Good luck and I'll see you all in the game. Huge thanks to Raid for 
sponsoring today's episode. Now, let's get back to having a little bit of fun with C8. The thing about having really small hands is if I want to clean the oil out, I can get my hand all the way through it. You know what that means, right? I'm scared to ask. You get to clean the pipes out underneath there too. <laughs> oh, yay. Way up in there. Did I say my hands fit in here? I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> we also took off the charge pipes to be safe to take a look at them, and there's actually no oil in these, so that's super good to know. It took an extra step to take a look inside the intercooler. We Gucci boys, we Gucci. We bought this when we were in Texas in order to heat wrap the exhaust, so I'm glad that we're getting to use it now. We're missing safety wire. AutoZone? Wah, wah, wah. I don't know if AutoZone has it. To Harbor Freight we go. Hola. We're here, but wait. What is that? Oh, this is clean. And it's on RPF1s. Oh, this is so clean. Look at this. One day, you guys, I will build an RX-7. I can't promise you it'll have a rotary in it, but I will build one. Oh, I love this. That's oh, beautiful. Mad respect. What do you think of RX-7s? Meh. You're a truck guy. Truck American guy. We secured the bag. Two down, two to go. Yeah, yeah. Although, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Let's hold some breath. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost done. We have one more exhaust portion to do, and we have to make it to the AC place within the hour before they close so that we can get this tested and figured out. Let's wet this and let's keep going. All right, we have the heat wrapped exhaust on. We'll go back and do the X pipe another time. We've got the charge pipes done. Everything is great. We're gonna go ahead and turn over the car and make sure we can hear the scavenge pumps turn on and then we're gonna bomb out of here because we're fighting the clock right now. Five, six. Be warned, there will be burn off if not from the heat wrap from a little bit of residue on our fingertips. We tried to clean out the oil as best as we could, but first start, burn it off, head over. Those are those pumps work. All right, little. I think we cleaned the exhaust pretty good, boys, because there is close to no burn off. Maybe a little bit. <sighs> we made it just in the nick of time. But unfortunately, they don't have the attachment that is needed for this system, which is kind of a bummer. Called every place else, but everything's closed right now because it's six o'clock. I really don't want to go to AutoZone. We're going to go back to the shop. We're going to regroup and we're going to see how desperate we are to get the AC tonight so we can data log the IATs and just make sure the car is good. We could always just do it in the morning, but uh, that just delays me showing you guys what this next build is going to be. We got to the shop. We're going to get the AC vacuumed and charged in the morning, and then we'll do some data logging tomorrow. In the meantime, we're just buttoning up a few things that we said we'd get back to later that we didn't actually think we would get back to later. <laughs> Probably see you guys in the morning. All right, so I'm here at the shop early before everyone else gets here because I'm meeting an AC guy. The thing about this car is I wanted to put 134 into it. The viscosity of it is the same, so I didn't think it would be an issue, but a couple of my homies who know a lot more than I do said I really need to run one, two, three, four. These are the different types of Freon. So trying to find someone who has the new machine to do one, two, three, four was extremely difficult. I did find one company and they're going to meet me here, hopefully any second now, and they're gonna charge the AC. And then I think we're ready to go for a drive and just data log and make sure everything looks good. Hi. Well, the AC guy's here. He's working on it right now. It looks like he's about wrapped up. One minute, 37 seconds later. Well, here we go. <laughs> Round two. Round two. We're gonna go to a gas station and fill up the air. She's at 178. The fans are already on and uh, temps are cold. She's warmed up because we took a minute to back her out of here. These are some loud fans. You hear this? Like a spaceship about to take off. All right, I have a feeling better about the car now. Once we get her back to what she was in Texas, stoked. We came to the shop real quick. Let's see how quickly Sandy comes once I start the vet. Oh, it's warm, so it's not as loud. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi! Cool beans, guys. Car temps are a lot colder than they were the last time. Makes sense, because now the fans are running. Okay, I'm gonna start driving a little harder.
that wrench. Okay. So we believe the meth is turning on. I don't know why these fucking cheap ass LEDs. They're probably kicking on. They're so dull, or they're not turning on. Based off the data, we assume that the meth is running. The car feels better, adding a little bit more timing. So the more we drive it, the better this car feels. We're out of Best Buy right now because we're gonna grab an extension for the USB cable so we can read into the net and make sure that it is firing. Hope to grab. It's Best Buy. Yeah. These, they're not working. We don't want to rely on them anyways, so we'll just go straight to the source, boys. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> It's in the rubber seal. Perfect. Uh-huh. All right, we got meth, boys. Okay, so I called the guys over at Complete Street Performance. They were super helpful. Our meth wasn't working. Our fuel trims looked okay. Everything is okay. We're not running a heavy spring because we're still doing a little bit of R&D to make sure everything works great. I don't know why the pump wasn't properly communicating with the display, and if it's not talking to the display, it won't work. But call Complete Street. The guys knew immediately, so let's go out there. They don't go 100%, it's like 90, 80 something they only do. Was well, that what it's reading? Yeah. That means we get to add more timing. Mm -hmm. Just lean into it. turn up the boost and see what this thing can do. <laughs> so if you guys didn't catch it in the beginning, I didn't really explain it all that well what had happened. Two different things had happened. One, when we were noticing the high IATs and, it's, and we said it sounded like the water pump wasn't turned on, it was actually the fan we weren't hearing. And that's because of the AC issue where it wouldn't turn on until 205, where I was used to it turning on at about 170 at like super high power. So that's what we weren't hearing. What actually happened was when we were literally right around the corner from the shop, one of the scavenge pump wires had melted on the exhaust which triggered the relay and it just cut power to both the scavenge pumps fortunately you know we did kill the car no damage was done we just got a little bit of build up in the pipes and now like you guys saw like when i was smiling before i was driving i'd be like straight faced and by the end of like the pull i'd have the biggest grin on my face and i can sincerely tell you that that is all so genuine the car doesn't bring me a smile unless it truly brings me a smile and that's when you guys know like whether or not i'm having a good time she's all broken in engine is good and happy the turbo kit runs great. This is my new little spot, you guys. This is where I'm gonna start coming to hang out with my car friends. You're probably wondering what is next with the C8. I do plan on bringing her back to Texas. We're still gonna do a little bit of drag racing for now. I'm gonna daily her for a little bit. I just wanna make sure she is 100%, put some more miles on her. Hopefully someone comes out with uh, a clutch pack upgrade in the next few weeks. I don't know. There is still plenty of fun that is yet to be had, but thank you guys so much for watching. Eker, you are the best, you are my family and we are out here with love. Bye! <laughs>